What's up guys and welcome back to another G35 video. So ever since I bought the G35 back in July of 2019, I always felt that the G35 drove a little interesting and a little funky. So it never had to do with the engine. The engine always felt fine, but it was something to do with the transmission. As many of you guys know, when I would do runs on the G35 versus other cars, I would get gear lockout. And that was something that I always complained about. And I thought it was the transmission and it was the synchros going out. It's not what you guys would expect. I don't know if this has to do with the lack of knowledge that I have on manual transmissions or the fact that I've never had a manual transmission car before this. It just wouldn't go into gear. It would leave me out of gear sometimes and I have to pump the clutch a couple times in order for it to get into gear and work properly and work like a normal car. If it really was the transmission and it was messed up, it would be exactly that all the time, right? When I ended up buying the G35, a couple months later when I think I installed the BC Racing coilovers, that very same day I found out that the G35 was completely empty of clutch fluid. So I ended up finding out the root of the cause. It was a slave cylinder. Ended up replacing the slave cylinder that's right next to the transmission. Everything was all good to go. No more leaks. Everything was fine. But I still felt that the pedal wasn't as good as it could have been or should it be. What if it's always been the clutch master cylinder and because there was no fluid, the seals just ended up tearing apart because it was just riding on itself. So then I started thinking, sometimes it gets better, sometimes it gets worse. The pedal will feel amazing one day, the pedal feel garbage the other day, and I'd have gear lockout. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. I basically ended up kind of throughout the years realizing, I'm like, hey, I think the transmission's fine and it's probably going to be the clutch master cylinder. So what we're gonna do in this video, install the clutch master cylinder, reassess how the car feels, how the transmission feels. Regardless, I am gonna be replacing it with the CD09 since I already have it. And then along with that, I'll throw in some goodies like a new clutch, a new flywheel, maybe replace the rear main seal as well where I'm there. So with that story time and sharing how much of an idiot I am, let's go ahead and show you guys the part that we're gonna be replacing in this video. So this is the clutch master cylinder. And as you guys can see, this little part right here connects to your clutch pedal. So when you push in the pedal, it basically pushes in this whole thing and you have a seal inside here that is a rubber seal. So it will wear out with time, with use. So this is what we're gonna be replacing in today's video. Not a hard install. You really just have to worry about this one, trying to make sure you don't strip out the nut. I know one of the symptoms is also that the pedal goes to the ground and does not come up by itself. I I haven't had that issue, but again, I'm gonna be replacing this even as preventative maintenance for the future since I already have suspicions of it. All right guys, so first thing we gotta do is go under the G35 and we gotta go ahead and drain out all the fluid. It just makes it easier and less of a mess to go ahead and remove the master cylinder. So what I have right here is a eight millimeter wrench and then I have the tube that goes all the way down to this Gatorade bottle. We're gonna go ahead and drain out all the fluid and then from there we can go up top and start messing with everything else. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the hard line that is connected onto the clutch master cylinder. You guys can see I already have a flare nut wrench on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it, and then we should be able to do everything else on the inside of the G35. I find it easier to remove the hose so you have access to take off the flare nut. If not, you're kind of struggling around. So next up, what we're gonna do is disconnect the master cylinder from the pedal, take off this little clip. After we take off the clip, we can take off this rod and then we'll have the pedal free from the master cylinder. And only thing to do after that is to remove the nut that is on each side of the master cylinder. And after that, we should be able to take it out and go ahead and put the new one back in. All right guys, with the clutch master cylinder removed, we can see the new one down here and then we have the old one up here. So something I ended up doing is making sure that the old one and the new one were exactly the same length so I wouldn't have any issues. The old one in comparison to the new one was three millimeters longer. So I went ahead and made the new one three millimeters longer because it was three millimeters short. What I ended up doing is using this digital caliper to go ahead and measure from where the firewall would meet to the pedal. I went ahead and used it for both of the master cylinders to make sure they're exactly the same length. I was just gonna go ahead and install the clutch master cylinder, but I realized I also have a bench bleeding kit. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to bench bleed your clutch master cylinder. All right guys, so this is the setup that we're gonna have to be able to bench bleed the master cylinder. So essentially what we're trying to do is make 
make sure that we don't have any air and make it really easy for us to bleed the master cylinder and all the whole system for the clutch. So where the flare nut would be, you're going to have this little guy right here and it's going to have a hose attached all the way into your reservoir. Once it's in your reservoir, you're going to fill it up with fluid and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pumping where the pedal would be. You're going to pump this. All the air is going to go through here, go back into the fluid. I would recommend doing this just to ensure that you do everything right and you don't have to take this apart and bench bleed it later. So now with it bled properly, we're going to go ahead and put the master cylinder back on the car and we'll do everything in reverse order. Alright guys, the G35 is done. We went ahead and put everything back together. I made sure I had no leaks from the flare nut and made sure everything was tight. Along with the inside, I made sure everything was put back together exactly how it was. Made sure to tie in the two nuts that are needed in order to keep the master cylinder in place. Now that everything's all good to go, I also ended up bleeding the slave. I just gravity bled it and made sure that no bubbles were coming out. Since I am by myself, that's the only way I found I was able to do it. Alright guys, so it actually has been a couple weeks and I completely forgot to film the rest of the video. So I was looking back through my footage and I found out I never closed off the video. I never showed you guys how it felt afterwards. So like I said, a couple weeks later, the Clutch Master Cylinder did help, but I will say it still kinda does the same thing getting into gear. Sometimes it's better than other times and I think it actually is a transmission. So I thought and I was pretty sure that it was going to be the clutch master cylinder, which I do think the transmission shifts are easier. But luckily, I, like I said, I do have the CD09 and the CD09 is going to be installed in the G35. I also went ahead and finally fixed the oil lines. I ended up buying a brand new oil cooler and that one messed up. So I ended up saying, screw it. I'm buying the best of the best. I went with the company Citrab, C-Trab, and they have probably the best oil coolers you can probably get. Previously, I had the 19 row oil cooler and now I went to a 13 row since I am daily driving the G35. I really don't find the point of having a bigger uh, oil cooler by the end of the year the goal is to get this g35 tuned so that's gonna be it for this g35 video I hope you guys did enjoy it I hope you guys learned something from this video I know bench bleeding isn't really talked about all that much so that's something that you should focus on whenever you're changing any master cylinders so you don't have any trap there like I said smoggy is doing the g35 we have the long tube headers that we have to install in this g35 which that's gonna be a fun video and I also haven't been as active as I want to be so that's something I need to work on on. I've just had a bunch of life stuff coming up so I've been focusing on that and staying afloat so with that being said I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace